Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. It's Ganesh and Tass back again from Cloud Complete. How are you, Ganesh? Good, Tass. How are you? Doing well, doing well. I hope you are too. So the last time we jumped on video, we talked about Skype, Skype yep. for Business. The differences between Skype and Skype for Business. That's yep. right, yeah. So we gave you an overview talked about some of the features that were added in Skype for Business that you don't get in Skype. Right. And gave you some reasons why you might want to use Skype for Business instead. That's true. Yeah. So what are we going to do today, Taz? So today what we're going to do is what we promised we'd do in the last video, which was rather than talk about Skype for Business, we thought we'd actually jump in, get hands on, and show you what Excellent. we're talking about. Because uh, when they say a picture tells a thousand stories. A thousand, yeah. Uh, nah, it's a, I think yeah. they get the picture. It's fine. <laughs> they get the, they get the picture. <laughs> yes, and we are going to give you the picture. So here we go. Okie dokie. All right. So on my screen here, I'll make this a little bigger. Yep. Why don't you tell the people uh, out there, Ganesh, what they're looking at right now? Right, so um, just a quick product overview over here. Mm -hmm. So this is the screen that you get after you sign in to Skype for Business. Um, so you get to see your profile pic over there. You get to see whether you're available. Yeah. Um, maybe you can. Yeah. Okay. Look so at up the, the top other. here, we've got my yeah. name. Yeah. Got, got my your photo and a little. And you've got a green, green tick, which yeah. indicates that you're available. And I can. I can. Uh, you can set that. Change my status accordingly. Yes. If I don't want people to disturb me, I can do that Don't want to start, um, yeah. and I can set my location if you know perhaps I'm on site or I'm at home or you know I want to no matter where we are Taz we're always in the cloud so. that, well that's right <laughs> <laughs> we're always connected so the uh, okay so one thing that's worth pointing out here um, and this is again is one of the differences over Skype is that my status is actually linked to my calendar in yes. Apple and that's because everything lives in Office 365 uh, Skype for Business actually knows if I'm in a meeting because it can look at my calendar and right. it can see if I've got a meeting scheduled. In which case, uh, my little green tick becomes a red, red dot. dot. Yes. Yep. And when I have a red dot, people, uh, well, depending on how I've set it up, but by default, people can't actually send me a message because yes. I'm busy. Yeah, I guess it depends on how it's set up, though. Yeah, but what will happen is I'll get that message later. But let's not digress mm. on that point. Uh, moving right along. Uh, Beneath that, we see what appears to be a list of contacts. Right. Um, so those are the list of contacts that you have added to your um, contact list. Yeah, so these are the people I chat to uh, on, a, on a somewhat regular basis. Right. And I can see their status too, just like yes. I can see my own. So, which means you, I mean, you don't have to disturb them if they're they're busy. So. That's right. Yeah. And then if I wanted to interact with someone, as you can see here, if I hover over that person, uh, it gives me the option to send an instant, instant message, message, start an audio call, a video call, or I can just have a look at their contact card, which will give me some more information about that person. Okay, I've never done that, all right. <laughs> and uh, I can also edit their contact. And yeah, that's really all there is to that. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and then I can see the people who are away. I've got this group by status right now, but I can also group people into the groups that I see fit. So here are my contacts and clients. Yeah. Here are some of our suppliers. Right. Uh, which which brings us to an interesting point. We don't necessarily need to have people here that are only within our organisation. Um, right. You you can have external network in your. Correct. Contact and list. They can be Skype for business users. They can also be Skype regular Skype oh, okay. users. Um, okay. And depending on the on the requirements of, of your business, you can actually restrict how that works. So you can set it up in such a way that people can only communicate to Skype for business users internally in the organization. Right. Or you can open that up for external people on Skype for business, or you can open it up even further so they can have external people on the Skype network as well. Huh. So and we can control all of that. We can control all of that. Excellent. Okay, so I think uh, they're the main points there. The only other one really is, um, and this is an, again another point of difference from Skype and Skype for Business, is that the conversation history that goes yes. on, that's, 
that actually gets saved into our Outlook mailbox. Right. I think we touched upon uh, in the previous video where where we show the difference between Skype and Skype for Business. So, so if we jump over to Outlook, we can see here that uh, we've got the conversation history folder. Right. And this is where all of my previous Skype for Business conversations live. Now, of course, the benefit here is that it's in my mailbox. And if it's in my mailbox and that's in the cloud, then generally speaking, or not generally speaking, what that means is that I can access it anywhere. I can right. see it on my phone. It's packed up. It's... And it's or, searchable. It's searchable, of course. So when I'm searching through my email, if it was a conversation that I'd had with someone, that would also be searched Absolutely. as well and potentially come up if it it's, matches on search results. It saved me a lot of times from time to time. Yeah, me too, me too. Uh, okay, so which then, now that's this segues into the next part of Skype for Business, which is the integration into Microsoft Outlook. Right. Uh, yes. Now, of course, Everyone we speak to, Ganesh, spends a large majority of their time working in Outlook. Yes. Um, so having that integration in, into Outlook is nice. Now, what am I actually talking about here, Ganesh, when I um, say... So we're going to show them how we can um, set up a Skype meeting, uh, set up a meeting right from Outlook. Yep. Um, and that would obviously be a Skype meeting in the sense that you give them a link for them to join the meeting when the right. time is there. Maybe we'll show them and that, then it will yeah. make more sense. But before we jump into that, uh, one thing that's worth highlighting here is we actually get what's called presence uh, added oh, yes. into, into, Skype, into, sorry, into Outlook as well. So once Skype for Business is enabled and we're signed in, I can actually start to see the people I'm emailing, uh, both again inside and outside the organization. I can see their status. So right. um, this person here, Cameron, he's a contact on my Skype for Business list. I can see that he's away. I can see that Stephen over here is actually available. And if I did want to respond to this email, uh, in, in a, perhaps I don't want to email back. Maybe I want to just send an instant message instead. Then all we I have to that do right is away from click there. on that, and up we go. We're straight into a chat. Right. Pretty handy. Yeah. Uh, now, the point you were talking about, Ganesh, is. Scheduling meetings? Yes. Yes, okay. So uh, one of the benefits, again, of Skype for Business is that we can host online meetings, right? Yes. Which means that we can save time on travel. We don't have to do it over the phone. We can um, save on phone calls, things like that. So for example, if I wanted to schedule a meeting next Thursday at 11 a.m., uh, I just jump into my calendar as I usually would. However, what we see up here, we've got this extra button. Right. And if you can't read it, it says New Skype meeting. That's it. We click on that. And we get this new meeting dialog box that comes up. So essentially, it, it looks like a calendar meeting. It is but, a calendar meeting. But it just has the Skype details over there so for them to join it. That's right. So, uh, yeah, and which you can see on the screen now, it's dumped a whole bunch of text in there, which uh, includes a link to join the Skype meeting. Right. Uh, now, the people who are joining the meeting, do they need Skype for Business? No. Absolutely not. Why not? Uh, because it will, uh, I mean, it's a link, and uh, once they click on it, uh, they'll get instructions on how to join mm -hmm. the meeting. So all they need is their name, mm -hmm. uh, and that's about it. And that's then they it. can join it. Yep, it downloads Simple. a little web app that they yeah. run in the browser, and they can join the Skype meeting, whether they've got Skype for Business or not. So, Which is a huge advantage. Massive advantage, yeah. Um, now, the other thing that's worth highlighting here is the dial-in number. So uh, if we're ho hosting a meeting and there's multiple attendees, uh, sometimes not everyone has access to a computer right. at that time. So what do we do? We give them a dial-in number and they can dial in. Now, mm -hmm. we, we can create uh, dial-in numbers anywhere in the world. I think okay. there's, there's several hundred locations that are supported. Wow. So people can dial in from all over the world. They just put in the conference ID, which is also there, highlighted down here. And we're off and running. Cool. Um, Taz, sometimes you must have encountered situations where a client immediately wants to meet. Uh, he wants to have a demonstration and he wants to have a meet right away. So what do we do? So then? as opposed to scheduling a meeting ahead of time, yes. if we just want to run a meeting on right away. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of ways we can do that. Okay. So we'll jump out of here. We won't save this one. Yeah. Um, now, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, but we can just come over oh, yeah. here. Right, of course, we can just do that. Hit the Meet Now button. Uh, and we are going to use a Skype for Business audio or video experience. So that basically means we'll use our PC mic and speakers. Right. 
And how do we add more people over here? Okay, so right now it's just me in the meeting, which is uh, yes. a little bit lonely. <laughs> Let's get some more people in here. Now, of course, it's going to bring up my contact list, yes. so I can pull just about anyone in. Um, we could pull Long in, but we might leave him alone because I know he's busy. <laughs> Um, but what we can do, and this is another handy feature, we can actually just, uh, if we wanted to dial someone into this meeting, we could just do this. And how would they get to know yeah. that? So it's going to dial that number now, which uh, coincidentally is my mobile number. Wow. Okay. And uh, we'll just wait. There it is. We can see here that, um, so that's my phone ringing, that's, that's the conferencing bridge dialing me in. If I answer that, I'll be in the call. See, it's just added me in, uh, and it's that simple. I'm seeing double of you. It's Friday <laughs> afternoon. Hung up, and now I've left the meeting. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, now, um, once we're in the meeting, of course, uh, assuming that the other participants are on yes. on the computer or Mac or a PC or a Mac, whatever the case may be, we, we've got a few options here. So we can share our desktop. Right. We can share a specific window. We can upload attachments. There are other add-ons such as whiteboards and things that we can use to collaborate in, in a live way. And not only that, it does, uh, um, but adding an attachment, does that mean it would also be stored in the conversation history, the attachment as well? I don't believe it is, no. Once the meeting's over, you can no longer access it. But, right, okay. um, still a handy feature nonetheless. Yeah, good. Uh, good. And probably the biggest feature here that I, I know I use this very heavily, oh, yes. um, we're doing product demos or training online with yes. people, or even running a webinar. Webinar, yes. We hit the record button, we record the meeting, when the meeting's done, we can just upload that into OneDrive and yeah. we can share that with the participants. Absolutely. So, um, especially really helpful in training because people often forget what you've shown them Yeah. and they need a reference point. So it's just a matter of hitting that button, sharing the file, they've always got that reference. And if they want to uh, access the recordings, they can go to manage recordings and that would open the... I All the historic the recordings that we've got. Yeah. So there you have it. That's uh, a bit of a hands-on with uh, Skype for Business. Uh, Again, you know, just reiterating off the previous video, we Skype for Business is a business grade product. It's why you get these additional features right. that don't come with Skype. And of course, one thing uh, you probably you may or may not have noticed there is no ads. So um, that's probably one of the biggest benefits too. I love that. Yeah, the distraction factor of advertising. It's just not there. So. There you have it. Uh, any questions, hit us in the comments below. If you feel like this has been useful and you know someone else who might benefit, yeah. send, send them the link and don't forget to follow us, Cloud Complete, Facebook, Twitter. Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, channel, I mean, the YouTube there. channel. And if you want to show your friends that now you know the difference between Skype and Skype for Business, go ahead and share it with your network. Yep, good stuff. Thanks, Ganesh. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Us. Thanks all. Have See a great day. See you next time. Bye.